My next guest is going to be fighting at LFA 90 on September 4th. He's going to be taking on Armando Gutierrez. It is Mo Miller joining me here on the program. Mo, how's it going? Awesome. Well, it's uh, good to talk to you. Um, what was it like uh, seeing your teammate Stipe Miocic uh, defend the heavyweight title and now go down? I think we can safely say this as the best heavyweight of all time. Uh, that was amazing to watch. I mean, me having a fight coming up and uh, watching him train and prepare for that fight. I think that inspired me and helped me a lot this camp. So like, it's always good when when he gets the job done. Then it's it's like a path to follow to say. And and I'm sure like like you kind of touched on it there. It probably kind of gives you a little bit of extra you know boost heading into your fight, just knowing uh, you know the team's doing so well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like we had a we had an amateur. Uh, one of my good boys, Gerald. He just fought in Florida. I think he was the first for us to fight this summer, and he got a 19 second KO. And then Stipe was right after him. So then, so that's good momentum. Then it's me and Alexa Jeff Hughes. So I think we all got pretty good momentum going in our fights. Let's start from the the beginning here, man. How did you get involved in combat sports? Uh, what 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 got MMA on your radar? Uh, combat, combat sports. I did, uh, I did Taekwondo and wrestling growing up, like my whole life. So I was kind of natural. Uh, it was kind of natural going into MMA, but I wrestled in college. So I was always around MMA fighters, just going to roll around at different gyms. And I, and I had a couple teammates who were fighting. So when I finished, uh, I just wanted to try it, and and I graduated in 2015. So in 2016, I had my first amateur fight. I was um I was training back home in uh, Canton, Ohio, where I'm from, and then uh, 2017, I made the jump to Strong South in Cleveland. You picked a pretty good gym, I'd say. I like like we mentioned at the top, getting to work with uh, you know one of the the best fighters of all time in Stipe Miocic. Um, what about like becoming a fan of the sport? When did that was that like while you were training, or were you like watching MMA before that? When did you become a fan? Uh, I I wasn't watching it religiously. I'll say that. So I never really had like idols in MMA. You know what I mean? Because I never. I just knew, like, it's something I could be good at just with my background. So, like, once I graduated college, that's when I kind of switched. Or during college, I kind of got it in my mind. I was talking to some fighters, and I knew, like, if I wanted to do it, I got to do it now. You know what I mean? Like, right after college. So, I never really, I never really, I was, I will always say I was a fan of it, but I, not religiously, I'll say that. I like the honesty though. At nice. least you're not like. At least you're not like. Yeah, I've been watching it from the start and all that. But no, that, that's that's understandable. I know for a lot of fighters, it, it's like that where it's just you know it became more of a uh, you know obsession, so to speak. Once uh, once you actually started training and probably understood a little bit more about it too, which uh, makes a lot of sense there. So uh, obviously, you know, fighting. I'm sure you hope to be your full time job. Uh, what are you doing uh, outside of the cage as far as work and you know paying the bills and everything like that? So right now, my nine to five, I work at a mortgage company doing. Basic office work, calling, emailing, you know, what you do there. Outside of that, I'm training. Uh, I train kids. I coach wrestling. I kind of stepped away from, like, the high school area and do individuals now. So, like, that's pretty much where most of my time is. So I'll go to my 9 to 5. I'll train. Uh, I'll train people or coach, whichever, depending on the day. And then I'll go to my MMA practice. So, like, we, we normally practice later in the day, 7 to 8 p.m. for our team. So, okay. like, so it works with your schedule, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Is it a good balance, though? I, I kind of think that's interesting where you have sort of the office job and then you get to do the, you know, the teaching and then you also train as well. So it's not like you're stuck doing one thing all the time. Do you like that? Do you like having the balance? Or would you prefer to just, you know, stick it straight to MMA or, you know, and, and all or nothing, so to speak? Uh, right now... I like the balance, but I would prefer to stick it to MMA. Yeah, go full time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, right now, I'm just – those are just paying the bills right now. You know what I mean? Like, so it's not – like, I'm sitting in an office all day 
isn't as rough on my body. Like before that, I was working in a factory. You know what I mean? Doing that all day, then going to MMA, it affected my performance. Like I could, me personally, some people are able to do that. But like me, I needed something more, a chiller atmosphere, I'll say, leading up to my MMA. Yeah, you you need that. You, you need the uh, you need the downtime, right? You need the recovery time because I'm sure at a factory you're lifting stuff or whatever, and so it's it's like you're getting a workout and then you got to go do the actual workout, which is training. So that's uh, that's totally understandable here. Uh, let's talk about this big opportunity you have here. I love this fight because it's you know a pair of undefeated guys going toe to toe, right? You're three and zero, he's four and zero. What do you know about uh, Gutierrez? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh. I don't really know too. I know enough about him. I say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know. I know enough about him. I think he's a, a real tough opponent for me. I think he's been running through these guys. You know what I mean? Like he, he was getting them out of their first round. I think he's a grappler-based opponent. So I think I match up well against him. Like I, I got a lot of skills. I say that. You know what I mean? So wherever he decides to take the fight i feel like i can match his effort wherever so i think i think i'll be a different matchup for him uh coming up next week we talked about training camp off the top Uh, who are some of your main training partners that have been helping you get ready for this fight uh this fight was a little different because corona you know what i mean so like people kind of doing their own thing you know what i mean trying to maintain or whatever but I, I did have a pretty consistent group of partners, but I also was, like, bringing in some people specifically, you know what I mean? So I, I guess, like, for the wrestling side, I had uh, Jose Rodriguez, a national champion out of Notre Dame. I had uh, my boy Max Meese, who's a southpaw, one of the best in Ohio. Like, you'll probably hear about him. I've heard his name before, actually. It's funny you mentioned him. I've been hearing Max's name for a couple of years now, so that's uh, that, that's a good guy to work with as far as what I've been hearing, so that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did hear his name because I'm not sure if too many people knew about Max, but Max Max is real technical with his stand-up, so he's a like perfect opponent, real good pressure, real good jiu-jitsu. And I got this uh, uh, one of my main partners. His name is Larry Bell. I got to give him a shout-out. He's like, one of the, he, he's a fighter, you know what I mean? Like MMA or boxing for 15, 20 minutes, however long you want. He like a little in Ghana. <laughs> I can say that. Okay. Like he Fair to, enough. He used, weigh, like, he used to weigh like 200 pounds and he did a great job of getting his body in shape. And now he's on like 150. So when he's coming, like he hits hard, you know what I mean? He can keep the pace up. So like he was real good for me for this camp, just for the fact of uh, helping me keep the pace making it a fight the whole time, you know what I mean, and, and pushing me. So I really appreciate that guy, Larry Bell. So you're going to hear his name again soon, too. See, I like this. I always I always have to, like, pull it out of fighters sometimes, and I'm like, who are you training with? And they're like, well, you wouldn't know that. I'm like, well, tell me, because these are names, like, often, especially now with, like, Contender Series and everything, you see these are some names that we could be seeing on, the, you know, on, on a platform like that or LFA quite soon. So uh, good, good for you on uh, giving some endorsements there. I love hearing that. <laughs> A couple more too, so I, I don't want to like. Not no, no, of course, everybody. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. Obviously, obviously, there's there's probably a whole uh, list of guys there, right? So, for sure, good stuff. Um, on that same note, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? In my corner is uh Cody Stevens, who's a MMA vet. Like I trust him; he knows everything about me. Uh, same size, real smart mind, real good corner. He's been in my corner before, so uh, he hasn't not necessarily um he hasn't traveled with steve Bay, so i'm not sure if you know him, but he's been on the scene a while if you look him up he fought some really good guys so me and cody we going out to south dakota to handle it the rest of the coaches they just came back so we're gonna get them a little break no fair enough <laughs> how's this how's this fight playing out on uh, september 4th how do you see it unfolding see uh I, that's why I like to do interviews after the fight. <laughs> <laughs> then we can talk about what actually happened. Yeah, because obviously you get punched in the face, the game plan could change, right? But, uh, you know, it's it's a fight. Anything can happen. Yeah, exactly. Anything can happen. But on September 4th, uh, I do see myself getting a win. I think I will be his toughest fight for sure. Like, I don't think he faced nobody like me. I'm not overlooking him or putting him on a pedestal just based off his resume. Like, because he do got a good resume. Like, 
I can't take them lightly. But I know how I train. I know the people I train with, so I know I'm prepared. And I think I, no matter how I get it, but I, I think I'll get that, get the one in there. I think I, I'm sure he feels the same way, <laughs> but I'm not sure how it'll go. Like, I'm not sure how it'll go. I'll be honest and say I haven't really faced. I have, but I guess his skill set is a little different than what I faced, but it's nothing I've never seen before. So it's just about me being smart in certain situations, understanding what's going on, and capitalizing. And I think I'll get the win. What about outside the cage? Uh, we talked about work, but what about like your hobbies? Like, what do you like doing to you know unwind? You know, break up the monotony of training and, and work and all that. Are you like a video game guy? Are you watching any Netflix? What, what would I find you doing? Uh, like I said, my days is long. So like when I'm when I'm norm, when I get free time, I like to chill. Like, I like to play spades. So if anybody out there good in spades? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a, what, what is spades? Is it a game? A card game. Oh, the, oh the, just the regular card game, Spades. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure when you yeah. said that. Yeah, so like as far as like video games, I'm more of a, a, a Xbox guy. But I don't I don't play too much just because like my days is all like busy. Like, well, you have to invent like all these new games. You got to spend hours like getting into it. I, can, I don't do it either. I'm a dad. Like I don't have time to, you know, like look, go through like an entire storyline or like figure out all the controls. I'm a retro gamer. I like the old school games where you can just pick up and play like, you know, an old school like NBA Jam or something and play for like 20 minutes. And then you're good to go. That's how I roll. But I think I'm on that same books. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm 28. Like, I, I like the no man. 2K, maybe some Call of Duty or something, but like I'm not trying to really figure out no games right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, we're know. on the same page there for sure. Uh, Mo, it was uh, great getting a chance to talk to you, man. We're really looking forward to the fight. It's LFA 90 coming up here September 4th. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media you want to plug? The floor is yours, man. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, let's hear it. Do you remember me messaging you? I think I do, actually. I was going to ask you about that uh, off, off camera, but uh, yeah. How long ago was this? This was like two years ago, wasn't it? This was maybe uh, uh, maybe a year and a half. And then in February when I got my last win, remember I said I'm halfway there. Yes, yes. I do, I do remember you. Yeah. Yes. Persistence. Yeah, so I like I, it. So, well, we made it happen, right? So maybe you should buy a lottery ticket if you can uh, predict these things, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure for sure where can people get a hold of you on social media uh instagram and twitter at mo mo underscore miller so m-i-l-l-a